Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to assign a cell value in Excel automatically using if, sum, and the sumif functions, as well as later the if function combined with the sumif function. Alright, without further ado, let's get started in Excel and let's take a look at our sample class list sheet here. So, this is a list I originally obtained from Microsoft's website. Naturally, the attributions will be in the description below if you guys want to go check it out. But here I've made some modifications to the class list template to make it full of data basically. I filled in all the student data for all the dates that I need. Alright, and here we've got three separate lists a list for the if function, a list for the sum function, and a list for the sum if function that we are going to dive into separately later. Alright, let's first take a look at the if function. So for this function, I want to see if the number of times this student is present during the week exceeds or meets a certain standard. And if so, I'm going to assign him or her a participation award. If not, he or she is not going to get one. So of course, as with all functions in Excel, we are going to start with equal sign if open parentheses. And once you type that, you will see three items that you will need to enter. The logical test, the value of true, and the value of false. So the logical test is basically one number compared with the other and it will spit out true or false that's corresponding to the values all right so in this case i want to get the cell for monday plus the cell for tuesday plus the cell for wednesday plus the cell for thursday plus the one for friday I'm just going to do that. And for the second part of the logical test, I'm going to do greater than or equal to 4 because I want to give out participation awards to people who showed up 4 days or more. So that's my logical test. I'm going to put a comma right behind and I'll enter value of true, which is award. I want to assign an award to him or her if she meets this criteria. And if he or she doesn't meet the criteria, I'll give no award. Alright, and after I type that, another close parentheses, enter. And now you'll see this student gets no award because there's only one, two, and three presences or times present. If we take a look at the check marks and the crosses here, we can see that the raw value here is 1. But there is a condition embedded into this form that assigns a check mark for the 1 value and a cross for the 0 value. So you can see that that value is 1, that value is 0, and so on and so forth. Okay. So after that, I can just simply drag the value all the way down and it will automatically compute for me and fill in all the cells. So let's randomly choose some people and count if this computation is correct. So for Kelly, I don't know how to pronounce this name, but whatever. Uh, for him or her, this is a check. So one, one, two, three, four. Four is equal to four, so he or she gets an award. And let's look down here. For Gerd, let's count the times present. One, two, three and four so there is an award if we look at the last one one two three three
three times present, so no award for him or her. Okay, that's it for the if sheet. Let's go on to the sum sheet and look at the sum function. In this sheet, the goal is for the function to be able to count the numbers present for the student. All right, so as usual, we are going to start with sum, open parentheses, and for this one, we're going to control select the blocks under the P, which stands for present block. Right. And then we're going to simply close the parentheses. And we get three because this person is present one, two, three times. Right. And now if we drag it down like so, we will have all the values computed for us. So this person is present one, two, three, and four times. Wait, three and four times. So it shows up four. All right, let's go to the summit function. Now this is basically a function that combines the two, but the usage is a little different. So as usual, equals sum if open parentheses and we can see the first one asks for a range now the range is basically where you want to search to find a certain criteria so here for range you want to select this row you'll later see why and we're going to lock that down because we don't want this row to change whichever cell we are using to compute right here we don't want that row to change and we want the criteria out of this row to be p which stands for present we want to search how many present blocks are in this range and the same way we're going to lock it down by using f4 so that it doesn't change and for the third part, some range, we're going to select this row. Because we've found all the P's from our range. And Excel's going to look at if this is our sum range. Excel's going to look at what's the value in this P block, what's the value in this P block, and so on and so forth. And add those P blocks together to find the final value. So we just close the parentheses right here and press enter. We get a number of three, which is basically the same as we got in this sheet, in the sum sheet three. But how is it different? Well, it automatically picks out the P's out of this row and only looks at the values under the P. So if we simply drag it down again now we can see for Jordan let's say we have one two three and four presences or times present and that corresponds to a value of four let's zoom in a little bit and then go to the top so if we find a random value here and click on the formula, we can see that the range and sum range is still in the second row, in the second row of the list. That's how we locked it down. If we didn't lock it down, it will be each row will be uh, will have a range of below the second row, right? So each row down the line will have a range and criteria one row down from the last one that's why we locked it in earlier or it will be all over the place so now we know some if but i still want to assign the word award or the words no award to this column how we're going to do that is by combining the sum if to an if function so remember an if function returns a value of true and a value of false so we're going to combine 
it with the summit function by typing if in front of summit and the sum if is basically going to be the first part of our logical test. The logical test will again compare the sum if value to 4. If it is greater than or equal to 4, the value of true will be a word. And the value of false will be no award. Right. Hopefully, I I typed it correctly. Oh, yeah. Uh, I just missed the space between no and one. All right. So, if we drag it down again, we're gonna see exactly the same thing that we got for the. Oh, I didn't capitalize a word. Huh. Well, that's that's not cool. But anyways, we're going to see the same effect that took place in the first sheet, in the if sheet that we did. Whoops. Okay. Always capitalized. Alright. Um, wait, no. Not always capitalized. Hold on, guys. I need to fix this capitalization issue. Okay. Now always capitalize, and if we pick out some random ones, let's see, this student is present one, two, three, four, five times, so he gets an award, he or she gets an award. And this student is present one, two, three, four, so he gets an award. And the last student, one, two, three yeah three times only so he doesn't get an award he or she doesn't get an award so that's basically it we use the if and summit functions to return values automatically by testing for the number of times the student is present and comparing that to a threshold we set for excel we set in the formula that's four times and returning a value based on the logical test. So that's it for this video. If you have further video suggestions on what to do with Excel next, feel free to put them down below in the comments and I'll try my best to do those for you guys. But other than that, this video is over. Thank you guys for watching. If you found it helpful, please drop a like and give us a follow. Again, thanks for watching. I'll see you soon. Goodbye for now.